Welcome, World Hopper, to Cosmere Classified, where I'll be briefing you on the lore, investigating investiture, and delving into the secret workings of the Cosmere. If you're to be fit to travel the realms, this is information you're going to need to know, but much of the Cosmere is shrouded in the mystery of the unknown. So in these briefings, we'll also be discussing theories and speculation. Now today, we're going over a pivotal event in Cosmere history, the Shattering of Adonalsium. This cataclysmic event is a moment so profound that its echoes reverberate across worlds, shaping the fate of planets, the nature of magic, and the destiny of countless lives. Understanding the Shattering is something that all world hoppers should seek, as it lays the foundation for the complex interplay of forces that govern the Cosmere. The 16 shards that resulted from the shattering are the most powerful beings in the Cosmere. Their influence has shaped the worlds we visit and the magic systems that make these so unique. Join me on a deep dive on the shattering of Adonalsium. Now before getting into it, no matter where you are in the Cosmere, your personal information is being sold online all the time without you even knowing. Whenever you fill out a form online or sign up for a new account, data brokers are collecting your information and then selling it to advertisers, and that's why you get things like junk mail. And the likelihood of your own data being breached is constantly increasing as well. Putting at risk your info, like your full name, your social security number, your login credentials, your home address, and and even your relatives information and you deserve to keep your information classified the good news is that you have the right to request data brokers to delete the information they have about you but unfortunately the bad news is that this takes a long time if you're going to do it manually but that's where incogni comes in the sponsor of today's video incogni does all that work for you they reach out to those data brokers on your behalf and request that your information be removed from their lists even if the brokers reject incogni takes care of that as well. All you need to do is make an account using the email you want Incogni to protect, then you grant Incogni access to reach out on your behalf, and then sit back and relax and let them do the work. It's all automated, it's very simple, just today they sent 34 requests out for me and I can even see the big list of data brokers that had my information. If you want to protect your info, use my code CAPTURED at the link below to get 60% off an annual Incogni subscription. Use the link below to take back your information right now. Huge thank you to Incogni for sponsoring the video. Now, this video does contain some Cosmere spoilers. Not really any major plot spoilers, but it does have world-building spoilers from many different series in the Cosmere. And I'll be talking about general stuff that's going on behind the scenes in the Cosmere. If you are spoiler sensitive, you've been warned. Phase one of the investigation is to brief you on what Adonalsium was. Adonalsium, in the simplest terms, Terms was the singularity from which all investiture, the magical essence permeating every corner of the Cosmere, originated. Imagine it as the primal source, a wellspring of boundless power and infinite potential, embodying not just energy, but consciousness, will, and purpose. Before the Cosmere as we know it came into being, there was Adonalsium a unity that encompassed all aspects of creation, destruction, and everything in between. All of the motivations and the personalities we know the shards now contain in one being. At least that's what we gather from the limited information out there studied by Cosmere scholars. There's always more to discover. Now the true nature of this entity, or force, remains shrouded in mystery. Whether Adonalsium should be regarded as a conscious being capable of design and intent, or more of an elemental force, is a matter of ongoing debate. Chris, a scholar and fellow world hopper, author of Ars Arcanum, interprets it to be more of a being rather than a force. Anyway, there was a god, Adonalsium. I don't know if it was a force or a being, though I suspect the latter. Sixteen people, together, killed Adonalsium, ripping it apart and dividing its essence between them. 
becoming the first who ascended. And the evidence does suggest a consciousness, given accounts of Adonalsium's ability to be slain or to design the very fabric of reality, yet it very well could be something entirely beyond our current understanding of divinity and existence. Hoyd is likely the one world hopper that knows more about this matter, considering he was present at the shattering, but unfortunately he's as elusive to us as ever. Now the word Adonalsium is one you're going to find all across the Cosmere. Likely hearing the name somewhere is what brought you to this briefing. Now the origin of the actual word is lost to time, but an interesting detail is that Adonalsium is actually an anagram of a soul, a mind. Whether this holds any significance is hard to say, though design does have this to say about souls. Investiture is what souls are made out of. Well, everything is investiture, because matter, energy, and investiture are the same. But souls, as you'd call them, are parts of our beings that are pure investiture. Like, fire is energy. This table is matter. Souls, investiture. This could suggest that Adonalsium was a being of pure, concentrated investiture, more potent than any mortal soul. We can confirm all living creatures on some level have investiture. This is called the spark of life. All sentient creatures have a slightly greater amount of investiture than non-intelligent ones. And I believe it's safe to assume that Adonalsium was the wellspring of investiture, the highest potent form of this energy. Now, the scope of Adonalsium's power, whether confined to the Cosmere or extending beyond, is another mystery. Unlike the shards that followed, it's theorized that Adonalsium welded its power without constraint, a singular entity unbounded by the facets that later defined its splinters. In fact, as you can already assume, Adonalsium is widely credited to be the creator of the Cosmere and all life therein, a primordial architect from whose remnants the shards derived their powers. Now, before getting into a deep dive on the shattering of Adonalsium, who was involved, the motivation behind this group, the shards that came of it, and how it all shaped the magic and worlds of the Cosmere, let's first go over the little we know of the time before the shattering. It's very likely that Adonalsium existed before any other intelligent life form in the Cosmere, considering it's credited at creating all things. The question of Adonalsium's consciousness, whether it was an inherent attribute of its investiture from inception, or a complexity that evolved over eons, is like many other things, a mystery. However, we do know that Adonalsium had access to four primal commands known as the Dawn Shards, which were the tools used to create all things. Now, each Dawn Shard grants separate abilities. They're commands of immense power, and as all applications of investiture, they require a command and intent, which likely needed a heavily invested person with the understanding of a deity in order to use. Now, the true nature of Dawn Shards is studied by many Cosmere scholars. It's a very esoteric subject, and they're considered unspecified mythological objects. I'll speak again on the Dawn Shards soon. Now, while the Shards later went on to create their own worlds, there are some worlds that predate the Shattering that were created by Adonalsium. The planet Roshar is one of these as well as its celestial neighbors. Now, the continent of Roshar was specifically grown by Adonalsium. He even created much of the diverse ecology of the time, including the High Storms and Spren, long before honor and cultivation ever settled there. The Spren of this time were slightly different. They were splinters of Adonalsium itself that it left behind intentionally and that have attained sentience on their own since then. So you can think of Spren as little fragments of a god. Loose investiture, gaining sentience, is actually a Cosmere-wide phenomenon of investiture attaining sentience when left on its own. This is something we're still currently studying. Spren come into being in the realm of thought, the cognitive realm, and are shaped by the influence, the ideas, and concepts of the sapient life on the planet. And there was even sapient life on Roshar, pre-shattering. The Singers being the primary inhabitants during this time, 
and are likely the Dawn Singers spoken of in modern times. Looking at another planet, Taldane has a very specific odd orbit. It's a planet locked between two stars, and it's believed that this hints at the direct design of the god of the Cosmere. Now, Adonalsium's interactions with sentient beings at this time remains obscured, but we do know that apparently people were aware of its existence and power. Some even worshipped it as a deity. Despite, or perhaps because of its divine stature, some individuals grew to oppose Adonalsium. The Shattering was not a moment born of chaos, but of precision and intent. Sixteen individuals, whose names and origins span the expanse of the Cosmere, come together in a pact to disassemble the very foundation of existence, the wellspring of investiture. It is said it was a diverse group who grew to oppose their god. Their number included humans, dragons, and Shodel. Chris says their motives were equally diverse. Now the records even show that some of these people were romantically involved, others were related to each other. But what could compel beings, presumably of significant power and insight, to fragment the very source of their existence or power? to make the monumental decision to murder their god? Was it a quest for power, or a philosophical disagreement? I'm sure that each of the sixteen had their reasons, ranging from the desire for power to the belief in a necessity for change, but it's hard to not think of them all as extremely arrogant. After all, it takes an ego as big as a great shell to believe yourself smarter than a god, or to be able to do a better job. Now this very thought has led many scholars to speculate, was this an attempt to prevent a catastrophe? Did some believe this deity to constitute a cosmic threat? Was Adonalsium abusing its power, or losing the ability to make the right decisions in some way? There is some evidence to possibly suggest that before the Shattering, there were certain limitations in place, restrictions that some may have wanted to overcome. It's been said that on Roshar, Adonelsium intentionally prevented the Spren from accessing surges through Fabrials. In fact, it didn't want Fabrials to exist and so they didn't. It also appears that Spren were not as intelligent or self-aware during this time, possibly a restriction that was set upon them. Surge binding did not exist in its current form either, so perhaps it was removing such restrictions that motivated the opposition. Now the act of the shattering itself happened on a planet called Yolin, one of the oldest inhabited worlds in the Cosmere. Included in this group was Hoyd, though at this time he was going by Sephendrius. We also know Frost was present. Now Frost is a dragon from Yolin, and we'll have to discuss him more in a future video, but in addition to them, there were the 16 who would become the original vessels of the Shards. This group forged a weapon of unfathomable power and intent, aiming to confront Adonalsium itself. However, the historical record actually hints at the failure of an initial plan, though the details are a mystery. Whether this failure was due to the weapon's malfunction or an alternate strategy that didn't work out is a topic for speculation, and it is a possible possibility that the shattering didn't unfold as the conspirators envisioned. Some speculate that the very act of shattering Adonalsium, which reshaped the Cosmere, was an unintended consequence, rather than the deliberate aim. But that is just speculation. What we do know is that the weapon used to carry out this act was the Dawn Shards. The four primal commands that created all things eventually were used to undo Adonalsium itself. Many Cosmere scholars assume the Dawn Shards have a strong spiritual realm presence, given how powerful these objects are. Now, over time, some of these Dawn Shards have been secreted away in order to prevent unknown groups from ending the lives of billions. And we know these Dawn Shards still exist. In fact, we know a handful of people who have been in possession of these. But, curious world hopper, this is a topic for a whole nother briefing. We can make a full video on Dawn Shards in the future. In the wake of the Shattering, the power of Adonalsium was fragmented into 16 shards, each embodying a specific aspect or ideal of Adonalsium, called Intent. Devotion, Dominion, Preservation, 
Ruin, Odium, Cultivation, Honor, Endowment, Autonomy, Ambition, Invention, Mercy, Valor, Whimsy, Virtuosity, and one that remains unknown to us as of yet, though theories suggest that this shard's intent is similar to wisdom or prudence. It's been said that there's a shard that just wants to hide and survive, which is likely why the nature of this shard has remained a mystery for so long. Now, to function properly, a shard requires a vessel. It needs a mind to control it. And so the 16 killers each picked up a shard and ascended to godlike status and were faced with a universe open to their influence. They scattered across the Cosmere, either creating or finding a world that would become deeply imbued with the Shard's power, shaping the very essence of these planets, fundamentally altering the cosmological landscape. The worlds these shards came to reside upon became known as Shard Worlds, and the shards brought massive amounts of investiture to these worlds, leading to the emergence of unique magic systems influenced by the shard holders. This is why the magic of our universe differs so greatly in form and nature on each planet, whether it's the metal-based Allomancy of Scadrial, the Stormlight-powered Surge Binding of Roshar, or the biochromatic breath of Nalthus. Investiture is the one thing connecting these seemingly unrelated forms of magic. Now, some of these shards even splintered their investiture, resulting in things like the Spren, the Stormfather, or the Night Watcher on Roshar, or the Seons and Skays on Sel, or even the Divine Breaths on Nalthus. The shard's presence on a world also leads to the formation of a perpendicularity, a concentrated well of the shard's investiture that pierces all three realms, the physical, the cognitive, and the spiritual realm. And it's these perpendicularities that allow us to world hop from planet to planet, I'm sure you're well aware. And generally, if a shard leaves a planet, this would lead the perpendicularity to disappear. So we've come to discover that if a planet has a perpendicularity, that means there's a presence of a shard. However, autonomy is capable of creating perpendicularities unexpectedly across multiple planets in a way that goes against our current laws of realmatic theory. This is something we're still studying. We've also discovered that these perpendicularities can be closed by someone using the massive amount of investiture coming from it, or even powerful objects like Nightblood are capable of collapsing a perpendicularity. You may have also experienced that these wells of investiture also allow us to see into the spiritual realm. And next time you're on Roshar, try soul casting near proximity to one of these wells, because it actually makes soul casting much easier. Each world became focal points in the Cosmere's tapestry, each thread colored by the nature of the shard that settled there. Now, the nature of each shard eventually bleeds through to each shard holder, twisting their personalities to fit the shard's ideal. Ati, who is the vessel of the Shard Ruin, was described as once being a nice and caring man, but the Shard Ruin corrupted him, distorting his personality and making him only want to destroy things. Could this be why Hoyd refused a shard? Hoyd said that he wisely turned down the power the others all took, and in doing so gained freedoms they can never have again. This sounds like Hoyd somehow knew that these shards would influence the vessel and take away their individuality and freedom. He didn't want the responsibility of divinity. Now, this is interesting because I've heard some speculate that Hoyd was the original vessel of Edonalsia before it was splintered, and now he's trying to collect pieces of his former glory. However, this wild theory doesn't quite seem to fit with Hoyd, who prefers his freedom. Of course, unless he was at some point bound by Adonasium and now values freedom above everything else. But I think it's much more likely he was just one of the people who set out to shatter the entity. Now, we know that Hoyd is worried about Odium, and this is where I need to stop and explain splintering. Originally, the shards made an agreement not to interfere with each other, but many have broken that agreement. Odium is a shard that went on a killing spree, splintering ambition, devotion, 
dominion, and honor before eventually being trapped in the Rosharan system by the remnants of honor. The act of splintering a shard or killing it is not a permanent thing. Like I said earlier, a shard can splinter a piece of its power without dying, but splintering is when a shard is broken into dozens or hundreds of small pieces so that no vessel can take up the shard's power. However, investiture cannot be created or destroyed, so theoretically someone could gather all the fragments and pieces and put the shard back together. Odium, held by rays, destroyed the two shards on Cell, combining their polarizing powers and moving them into the cognitive realm. This became known as the door. This plasma-like substance is what makes world hopping dangerous on Cell. I can go on and on about the shards and do a deep dive on each and every one of them, and I'll make a full video on that in the future. But now, I want to talk about the letters that we've intercepted between Hoyd and several other prominent figures in the Cosmere, including Frost, Endowment, Autonomy, and Harmony. From this correspondence, we see that Hoyd is worried about the rising threat of Odium, his attacks against the other shards, and the potential for future devastation throughout the Cosmere, and is calling for assistance from these recipients. From these letters, we learn that Frost, being a member of the secret organization known as the 17th Shard, has taken an oath of non-intervention, and Frost dismisses Hoyd's concerns and urges Hoyd to not intervene. Now, as previously mentioned, the dragon Frost was also present at the Shattering, though it seems he too did not take up a shard. We know very little of Frost as of yet. Now, Hoyd's letters to Harmony, at least, have been met with less dismissal. To combine powers would change and distort who Odium is, so instead of absorbing others, he destroys them. Since we are all essentially infinite, he needs no more power. Destroying and splintering the other shards would leave Odium as the sole god, unchanged and uncorrupted by other influences. The power of Odium's shard is more dangerous than the mind behind it particularly since any investiture seems to gain a will of its own when not controlled. My instincts say that the power of Odium is not being controlled well. The vessel will be adapted to the power's will, and after this long, if Odium is still seeking to destroy, then it is because of the power. In truth, it would be a combination of a vessel's craftiness and the power's intent that we should fear most. Now again, this is a topic for a full Cosmere Classified video. If you want a full deep dive on Hoyd's letters and the responses, let me know. Now, we know that at some point, Hoyd held a Dawn Shard. The Dawn Shard he held had an intent opposed to the concepts of harm and violence, and his time holding it altered his spirit web, making it so that long term he found that he could no longer inflict harm on himself or any others, as well as unable to eat meat. Now, this Dawn shard is in some way connected to the first gem. The first gem seems to be a topaz with magical properties. We don't really know too much about it, but in the second Oathbringer letter, Hoyd is addressed as Safendrius, bearer of the first gem. And in the reply letter from Frost, he mentions a gemstone being dead. So whatever magical properties this topaz once had, it seems to no longer hold it. Holding a Dawn Shard for so long has had some other side effects on Hoyt as well. He appears ageless, and it's pretty much impossible for him to die. He can even regenerate any body part, even his own head. Now, while other people who have held this Dawn Shard have gained the ability to skip and teleport from planet to planet, it seems that Hoyd may not have gained this ability, though some theories have claimed he's developed some way to make his own perpendicularity using Stormlight, or at least found some easier way to world hop. Now we don't know 100% if Hoyd held a Dawn Shard during the Shattering, but I think it's likely. Now, with this next phase, I want to go over some theories. Now, there are some rumors and theories about an opposing force to Adonalsium, something that was different than the 16, but perhaps encouraged them. A cosmic adversary out there somewhere in the Cosmere. Now, I'm just mentioning this briefly because there is no evidence to back this up, so it should be taken as a wild theory and not as fact. 
One theory I do want to mention that has a reliable source is in regards to the motivation behind the shattering. In fact, this theory stems from the very words spoken by Hoyd in his account of Tress of the Emerald Sea. I can't, for your own good, you see. Ah, those words. I've heard those words. I've said those words. The words that proclaim, in bald-faced arrogance, I don't trust you to make your own decisions. The words we pretend will soften the blow, yet instead layer condescension on top of already existent pain, like dirt on a corpse. Oh yes, I've said those words. I said them with 16 other people, in fact. Now this could be interpreted that he and the 16 took up this cause to shatter Adonalsium because they could no longer trust it to make the right decisions, like it had become unstable in some way. Almost like they're taking the keys away from their grandparent, or forcing Adonalsium to retire. And this passage really does seem like Hoyt has come to regret the shattering, or maybe his role in it. Another theory is that possibly the shattering was Adonalsium's plan all along. Maybe it wanted to be shattered. And this theory stems from the Iriali religion on Roshar. The Iriali worship a god they call the One. According to their belief, the One knew everything, but had experienced nothing. And so the One became many in order to experience all things. As each experience was different, each brought completeness to the One, and eventually all will be gathered back in when the sum of land is attained and they will once again become One. The Iriali believe every person is a different mind of a single being experiencing different lives. And basically the philosophy behind the One is that the spiritual realm and the beyond are the same thing. When a person dies, their soul rejoins the investiture of the spiritual realm. However, most cosmic philosophers disagree with this belief. Now there are many interesting religions out there in the Cosmere, so it's hard to say if this directly relates to Adonalsium, but the philosophy of one becoming many is shared in the Shattering. Perhaps Adonalsium wanted to be shattered in order to experience life. Now this brings into question the idea of reforming Adonalsium. There's some wild speculation out there, and again, this is purely speculation, that Hoyd's quest involves reuniting the shards and forming Adonalsium back together again. Now, while Hoyd refuses divinity, he still appears to be attempting to gain forms of investiture from as many different shards as possible through other means, like breaths and surge binding, for example. Possibly a mission he has on Roshar is to find a safe way to be invested by Odium. However, I personally don't believe there will be a reformation. Hoyd helped shatter Adonalsium for a reason. We don't know what that is, but it was likely very important. In the shadow of such a monumental event as the shattering of Adonalsium, we're all world hoppers seeking to understand the forces that shape our worlds and ourselves. The shattering invites us to question, to explore, and ultimately to marvel at the intricate dance of creation and destruction that underpins the Cosmere. I hope this video helped answer some of your questions. Now, world hoppers, this is just the beginning. We have a lot to discuss, so be prepared and stay tuned for another Cosmere Classified.